And hi everybody out there, this is Mark Mannering from Class Training, just giving you a quick rundown, a brief summary of our Excel Advanced course that we provide and uh, all the versions are covered, no matter what version you have, we pretty much cover all those versions as you can see listed there. Okay, so the first major section we cover in the Excel Advanced course is lots of text manipulation formulas. And you can see in this example that we use in the course, we've got column A with one uh, full name in there. You've got David Price, Brad McCormick and so on in the one column. And we need to split up the first name and last name. We need to then convert the last name into uppercase or capital letters. We also need to uh, extract just the first letter of their first name. You can see D for David, B for Brad and so on. And then combine the two names or two parts of the name into a, a different sort of combination. So we can export them out or mail merge or whatever it might be. Okay, and here's the final result from uh, what we had to start off with, and uh, again, this is all covered in the Excel Advanced course, but this is using lots of Excel uh, text manipulation formulas, as I said, so you can see there now, I've split the two names up that were in the one column in, into columns D and E, I now have the uh, last name in uppercase or capital letters, I've got the first uh, name's initial there, and then I've combined the two together to give me the result that I want. Uh, quite easily in a lot of steps or stages just using those text manipulation formulas. So it's a great way to obviously manipulate text, uh, manipulate uh, product names, passwords and so on into the way you want and uh, all covered in the Excel Advanced course. Okay, the next big section we cover in the Excel Advanced course is the use of if formulas and lookup formulas. They normally go together or can go together. And what we've got here is just a simple example of a payroll timesheet. We've got the names down the left-hand side there. We've got their total hours that they've worked for the week. And what we cover in the course is how to just use the if formula to indicate whether they're worked overtime or not. And that's just a simple example of uh, the if statement. Okay, there's the final result using the if formulas there in column E, and it's all live. If I change Barney from 41 hours down to 35, for example, the if formula kicks in and indicates no, he hasn't worked overtime. Fred, uh, yes, he's worked overtime. So all covered in the advanced course. Okay, now what I've added in there are the lookup formulas to indicate the pay rate. So the classification for each employee there determines the pay rate. And we've obviously got a data store there somewhere for the lookup table. And that's just added on to or inserted to the data store tab down the bottom here just to make it easier to organize. And there's our classification pay rates and so on. So the classification and pays reference table is here. We've also got penalty rates table there as well and that's all used in the reference or in the lookup formulas just to go back to the admin tab here so we've already added in those relevant lookup formulas to look up for example Barney is construction 2 he has an equivalent pay rate of $26 if he gets changed to uh, casual for example I can just type it in casual and it automatically changes the pay rate so a great way to reference data onto your spreadsheet and then finally we've added or used another example of a lookup formula to look up numbers this time. So lookup formulas can look up text, they can look up numbers, and you can see there in column F the particular penalty rate that these employees receive. It's based on the number of hours that they work. So 41 hours relates to a 1.5 penalty rate. If I change the number of hours to say 32 here, okay, it changes the work over time area where the if statement is, but also you can see the penalty rate has been changed as well. So a great way to use these lookup formulas to set up your model spreadsheet. Okay, another big section we cover are the database features that Excel uh, provides you. So for example, we've got uh, a, a typical file here of last name, first name and so on. And a lot of people have used these before where you've got the database auto filters. So I'll just add those. And there they are, you can see the drop downs there at the top of each column. A lot of people know how to use these to extract our particular data and sort. But what we cover in the Excel Advanced course is how to add formulas or use formulas to report back what you actually filter out. Okay, and I've added those particular formulas there now. You can see the total of the salaries. In this case, the average salary, the biggest salary in the list, and also the count of how many records. But the thing is that when I use the drop down to filter out all of these records, so for example, I'll just go to the drop down here for department, and we'll say just show me the admin department. Tick that, click OK. It filters out the particular records, but also those formulas have updated. So now we've got the total of just those salaries we can see for the admin department, average, biggest, and so on. Now we can't just use the normal auto sum or average formulas. Uh, they just don't work with a filtered list. So there's an important function we use, and that's going to be covered in the course. 
Now another really important section we cover, a big section we cover in the Excel Advanced course is the idea of macros. How to work with macros, how to use macros and how to automate tasks and save lots of time. We've got a typical file here of expenses and months and amounts. Uh, here this is all raw data. If I go to the bottom you can see there's over 250 rows here for a whole year of data and I need to uh, summarize this, collate it and so on. What I'm going to do is uh, create a macro which automates the tasks and that macro is going to use a pivot table to summarize the information and create a chart at the same time. Okay, what I've done there now is to create this macro and I've also added a button onto the actual spreadsheet itself. So when I click that button, it runs the macro to analyze this data. I've also added a button to the quick access toolbar, as you can see there, and clicking that will also run this particular macro. Okay, so when I click that button on the spreadsheet or the smiley face button in the quick access toolbar, it doesn't matter, it runs this macro. Just clicking that and you can see straight away the pivot table has been created with its associated pivot chart. Now that's not creating any static data, that's actually working on the existing data in that raw information we saw before. So in fact if I go back to that raw data and add some new data which wasn't there before, so if I put some new information such as uh, photos which isn't there before, uh, use the same month here, put something ridiculous in so we can see the change that's been applied and also change one of the existing information up the top here we'll just go car expenses was uh, 5,000 for example so the new data comes in and all I need to do is just click anywhere inside the data and run that macro again by clicking the button and straight away you can see photos there is uh, gone berserk if I move the um, chart out of the way you can see the new data there and also car expenses has changed as well so using macros can save us lots of time Okay, almost there with our summary. Another big section we cover is the idea of data validation and conditional formatting. Both separate features, but they normally go together. So, for example, in this particular file, we've got test results, and they all must be entered between 0 and 100 and uh, entered as whole numbers, not as decimal points. And the data validation has already been applied to this example file just to show the end result. And if I click in here, people can add in their particular results, 85 and so on. But if they try and add in something that's outside that data validation rule, they get a, a, an error message. And they must retry or cancel. So any sort of uh, number that's outside the range of the data validation, they'll get the errors. That prevents any sort of loss of data integrity and saves some time for your data entry operators as well. Another feature we cover, as mentioned before, is conditional formatting in Excel, and I've already applied some conditional formatting here, and that's formatting based on a condition. So, for example, all of the maths results in column B are coloured if they are above the average towards the bottom there. And that formatting is live. So if I change one of the information here, one of the bits of data, from below the average to above the average, you can see the formatting comes back automatically. If there's a result that goes below uh, the data, or below the average in this case, then the formatting is lost. So it's all live data and gives you a great way to uh, automatically format your data. Here's another conditional formatting example where this time we're just indicating or showing the range of numbers with respect to each other, not compared to any particular uh, result. And these are called data bars, just giving you an idea of which numbers are bigger, which numbers are the smallest as well. And again, you can see at a glance where the range of numbers uh, lie. Here's another fancier example of conditional formatting using the traffic lights. Uh, green's good and red's bad. And uh, again, it gives you a great way to show almost a dashboard or key performance indicator type uh, spreadsheet. And you can see at a glance which numbers are good, which are not as good. Now also in the course, we show you how to bring those two together, the data validation and conditional formatting uh, features. So for example, we've got uh, procedure and risks, and we're using a data validation drop down here. So step one, step two, what risk is involved with step one of whatever the procedure is? So for example, if I click on the relevant cell, you can see a drop down popping up, and that's a data validation drop down, where I can select more easily high, medium, low, whatever. But if I click high, for example, we've got the conditional formatting there being applied to indicate that red is high because it's a high risk and so on. We can come down here and select uh, medium, we can select high again, and whatever we select, the conditional formatting is applied, so it's bringing the two together to create our little model spreadsheet, and it's uh, similar there for example too, but uh, no need to show it. So one of the final major aspects of what we cover in the Excel Advanced course, very important, is the idea of protecting spreadsheets so that people can't accidentally delete your uh, formulas, uh, corrupt your template and so on, so it's ready for next time. It's not a matter of making the file read-only, it's a matter of going through the steps to unlock the cells and then protect the particular spreadsheet so that they can still enter data in the data entry areas. For example, here, I can still enter my information. 
okay and the conditional formatting uh, is being applied there if they add or enter data that's uh, outside those validation rules again uh, the error comes up and they can't um, fool it basically they have to enter the particular numbers that meet that validation rule outside the data entry areas they can't accidentally or deliberately in some cases they're trying to uh, delete things they can't delete the formulas down the bottom here and so on so the outside area is protected and people can only enter data into the data entry areas now even though they can enter data here they still can't go to the relevant section or feature and uh, change their conditional formatting in this case you can see it's grayed out there on the data uh, tab the data validation is also grayed out so even though they can enter information they can't change those behind the scenes formatting if they realize that the file is protected they could try and unprotect it review and unprotect the sheet but uh, we've applied a password which they don't know obviously and so our password is um, protecting the particular sheet ready for next time Okay, that's all for a quick summary of what we cover in our Microsoft Excel Advanced course. Uh, there's obviously more features that we cover in the course as well, so uh, check our website or contact the office for uh, more detailed information. We also provide an introduction course to Excel if you think advanced might be too much of a or it might be too high a level, and also an intermediate course is provided as well. And finally, people, all attendees and participants to our computer courses and IT training sessions are entitled to the following services and benefits. We can initially provide a needs analysis of your current skill or your personnel's current skill level of the application and that can suggest the best course or level for them. We provide public courses in our training room and there's a schedule on our website for those. But we can also provide on-site training in your facilities and we can provide laptops to help out with your requirements. We provide face-to-face hands-on training with a facilitator uh, to follow through the exercises of the workbook and so on. But we also provide live webinars where travel might be a problem and they are very cost-effective. We can also provide online training as well. All our training manuals contain step-by-step -step instructions and shortcuts for you to follow through during the training and also afterwards as a reference tool. And most importantly, we provide customized content. So as well as the uh, particular content that we have with our courses that we've developed, we can also customize all this to uh, fulfill your particular training requirements. We also provide free refreshers on our training courses where you can come back and do a free refresher course. Uh, conditions apply, so please inquire about that. And we provide lots of support after the training. So you can email in or phone in your particular query or question, and we can answer that uh, for you. We have a web-based help desk, which can be used 24-7, obviously, with a large library of questions and answers. And you can submit your queries through that help desk as well. And we also provide our training manuals for sale, in case you wanted to run your own in-house training or do your own self-study as well. Okay, that's all from me for the time being. It's Mark Mannering from Class Training. Uh, thanks for your time. Please contact the office for any other information you might require about our training courses and services. But hopefully we'll see you soon so that we can help you learn lots and learn fast. Thanks again. Bye.